perdiendo entre las sombras desvaneciendo siempre otro despedir a veces más lento demasiado rápido para mí siempre tan fuerte mi necesidad por ti La primera mirada que yo vi Fue la misma que me diste en aquel despedir Aquel abrazo vino a ser el último que te di tu mano en mi mano Todo me lo sabía decir Welcome back on our series Two Years on the Road on the Pan American. Last week we talked about our adventures in North America and now we're going to deep dive in the Central America region. Huge contrast with North America, the distances are much smaller. It's seven countries stuck in between the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. Super diverse, crazy wildlife and for us a lot of questions raising on is it safe or not because the region doesn't have the best of reputation on security. Over the past two years, we have traveled through Europe, North America, Central America, South America, and Antarctica. Our home, our Land Rover Defender, is now on a boat to Australia. And before meeting it there, and continuing our world tour journey down under, we worked on this special video series. Two years of anecdotes, images, in three parts. Narrating the best, the worst, the curious, the fantastic, the learnings, the headaches, and the beauty of every single moment of Two Years on the Road. Part 2. Central America. But let's pick it up where we left it last week. We were in Mexico, in Yucatan, in Cancun. Nick just stole his meniscus. Bam, 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 we didn't know what to do. So we started calling the insurances, finding out what was going to happen. They said we could do the operation in Mexico if we found a good surgeon. Luckily, we found a surgeon who uh, did meniscus of multiple football teams. So it took two months and a half of re-education, physiotherapy to get through it. And after just two months and a half, I could start walking. You're walking. <laughs> You're walking so well. I'm walking. So I missed him coming out, but look. I'm walking. Are you walking now, And I took off the protection as well. You don't have to wear it? She says you don't have to. <laughs> and at the meantime, we also opened up the doors of our apartment for, uh, for Overlanders. So we called it Hotel Overland. And we actually had, I think, four or five overlanders come through and washing machine, dip in the pool, showers, relax, good kitchen, whatever they wanted was all there for free. And we actually had a good time. It was kind of our way to give back because so many people had hosted us already. We were like, we want to know what it feels to be hosting, even though it was not our permanent place. And it was fun. So by mid-March 2023, Nicola was all fixed up and we're really ready to move forward. Central America is a region composed of seven countries. And the first one was? Belize. Belize. Okay, nice, still remember. Belize was really cool. We crossed into Belize, very, very small country. First of all, it's all in English. And did we drive on the left? No, it okay. was on the right side of the road. But it still had, of course, the Latin Central American vibe. The coolest thing about Belize for us was definitely going on this island called Calle Calker. You would stop to seven different locations at sea 
and each location had a different type of uh, water animal. Funny story there is that we both stayed in a single bed because they only had one left and the whole island was full unless you went to luxurious places. And so Mathilde and I shared a single person bed for two nights. The cheapest deal for two people in the island, we were like two for $15, which is really good. Where you don't have money, you have ideas. And the second thing that was really awesome in Belize is the first time we had gotten completely lost in, uh, in the forest. This off-road full of just big plants invading and eating up the road. You couldn't even see the road at some point. We were just pushing all the plants and the trees and we were still pushing them down with the bumper. We just got completely through it and came out the other side, but we had no idea where this was going to go. Those tracks had not been driven on <laughs> for decades. There were small rocky rivers, so it was really nice because you're like driving on those remote places and then you see this dreamy little stream with big rocks and we could just go and picnic on it. We also got a taste of the Caribbean culture. People were extremely relaxed and extremely welcoming. Maybe it's one of our favorite stories, but one end of afternoon, we needed water before exiting the city. We found this little shop and when we showed up in front, Savido reopened the entire shop for us. It filled up our tanks, filled up our jerry cans. He didn't let us pay. This is where we slept last night. So, this is the house of Sabido. This is his little company. It's a water purification store. We filled up our water tank yesterday and uh, it was around 10 p.m. And he says, ah, oh, you shouldn't drive at night. And uh, if you want, you can park in front of my house, sleep here, no problem. So we ended up doing that. It was perfect. The next morning we wake up and we have the breakfast on the bumper of the car. And he put the sticker of uh, Belize on Albatross. So memories forever. He put his uh, water shop on iOverlander. After that, he sent in us an email with a selfie photo of other overlanders uh, passing by his shop. And that was incredibly heartwarming. We then entered the second country, Guatemala Forest. Entering from Belize, you arrive really in the tropical region of Guatemala. Um, we saw again some gorgeous Maya sites. There's the site of Tikal, and it really looks like Indiana Jones kind of vibe. You climb all the way up those pyramids, and then all you see around you is just like top of trees and other like little stone structure popping out. And I think one of the best memories from our first night in Guatemala is we set up camp and above our car we got our first spider monkeys uh, jumping around the branches yeah. were everywhere and they were just having so much fun. We spent maybe an hour like running after them and taking pictures. Yeah, and I had to change the front brake pads and I was just hoping that they wouldn't come down and start taking stuff away. And as we moved uh, west in Guatemala, we arrived in the volcano region. The country has plenty of volcanoes, many actives. One of our greatest memories of Guatemala is probably the 
the ascension of Akatenango volcano. You can see fuego, fuego means fire, and fuego has its name for a reason, is that it's actual lava that is coming out every five minutes. It's, it's long hikes over there. Uh, and if you want to see the lava, you need to live in the middle of the night. So we left at 1 a.m. from our camp. Yep. It was a thousand meter elevation for the climb in the middle of the night. And it was short. It was what, five, six kilometers only to oh, be yeah. a thousand meters up. It's like this. So it was like this nonstop. The best moment was when we were at the top and the sunset was just coming and we were hiding ourselves under this big boulder, this big rock together just looking at the fuego volcano erupting before the sun would come up because then you don't see the fire anymore and so we were freezing just like oh, come on and we we're trying to film it so when we were up there we were practically the only ones and when the sun came up we turned around and it was like 500 people there all looking at the volcano and the sunrise it was just nick and i in our little corner and then we turn and we see this Guatemala eh, for us was the amazing mix of beautiful Maya culture because it's the country with the highest proportion of Maya people and amazing landscapes. It's extremely densely populated, so for us it was also harder to find uh, wild campsites. One evening we found a plantation, I think it was like banana plantation or something yeah. like that, and it was a whole like maze of tracks, so we thought, okay, if we go there we won't bother anyone. There's this like pickup truck that arrived full speed and... Four guys inside. Yeah, two come out, the hands on the hips, and they have uh, weapons in, the, in Guatemala. They looked really serious and they were like, what are you doing here? I don't think we answered much. We no, kind of we like... said, yeah, yeah, sorry, okay, we're going. And he tried to ask another question, we just left. So camping was a bit of a challenge. You know, there's always a good thing coming from challenges. We were looking for a campsite somewhere else. And then this guy on the side of the road is like, yeah, you can come to my place. And he introduced us to his entire family. We went to see the moon in the evening from the little hill next to his place. And then the next morning he had to take care of his cows and we went to help him. And that will remain, I think, one of our favorite experience of Guatemala. Yeah, that was really cool. Really, really cool. And being able to help somebody on the road like this who has been so generous, really felt being part of their family just for a few hours, but also feels like, you know, you're giving a helping hand to people who have helped you. So it just, it's just incredible. And it it's, would be amazing to see them again. Gracias. Gracias. Ciao, ciao. had a chocolate so we need to wait for him to finish. They're actually really good truffles. Mm. So I start? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next countries in Central America after Guatemala uh, were El Salvador and Honduras. They're kind of side by side. We started by El Salvador and you might have heard negative feedback. Uh, it's common to hear about gang violence in those countries. Not being worried, but being a bit wary of like, maybe we will need to change the way we travel. We very quickly felt very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt very com comfortable. Uh, we were driving through the streets, going in 
off-roads, uh, tracks. We were even passing in front of farms, completely remote, asking people the direction. Everyone was very chill and relaxed. And at some point we even parked by the beach and then all these uh, military officers were walking around and they're like, oh my God, no way, you guys came all the way into our country. Oh, it's amazing, so happy that you guys are here. And they're like, hey, come on, let's take a photo together. And so there's a photo <laughs> of me in my swimming suit uh, and f with these guys fully clothed and big guns. And that's when we were like, oh man, this is, this is totally chill. This is awesome. As yeah, so of us, El Salvador is eating pupusa, their national dish, some sort of pancakes filled up with cheese and meat. Yeah. Something like that. Having a drink at the beach. Yeah. In fact, to know about pupusas. One, it's the national dish of El Salvador. <laughs> And the second fun fact that I discovered writing pupusa on my phone is that when you write pupusa, there's a pupusa shape emoji. And then crossed into Honduras. When we went to Honduras, we were invited by this uh, guy called Daniel for a barbecue. And we said, okay. And as we get closer, uh, Daniel says, hey, by the way, uh, let's go to my other house at the top of this mountain. We had no photos, no nothing, no information about who this Daniel was. So I sent a quick message to my mom saying, hey, by the way, we're going in this location. In 30 minutes, I'll let you know if it's all good. We went to the top. He shows up with a defender. Right away, we see a big smile. He looked really good and full of energy. We're like, okay, this is good. But we're like, let's wait till we get to his house. We got to his house, parked. And then there was a big barbecue, all his friends and tons of defenders. And then we told Daniel at some point later the same story because we were like, you know, we don't know you. So we're here with Daniel. Spend the past two days with him, two nights. And uh, who better than Daniel to stick the Honduras flag? The hardest job you have is to get the sticker out. No? No. That's probably the hardest one, yeah. The second hardest job mm -hmm. is you have to make it aligned. Yes, yes. Move, move, Nick. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's a lot of precision, huh? It's so stressful. It's perfect. Is it? Oh, yeah. I think it's lower. It's lower. It's no, but it's the, the sticker is smaller. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is what's beautiful about all the people we meet on the road. A lot of them, we don't know them. Actually, all of them we don't know. We usually always play by the trust game uh, until proven wrong. And so far, it has always been great. We self-reflected on that. We were like, maybe it's because we, one, we don't hang out too much in cities. The second is that we move every day. So we arrive end of afternoon and we leave in the morning. So I guess it would be, if we were to be attacked or to meet bad people, uh, they would need to be here at that moment. As we're talking about security tricks, let me take one minute to talk to you about the partner on this video, NordVPN. When we travel, we use VPNs to find cheaper flight tickets to access our French TV show that are blocked abroad. But the number one application we use it for is for digital security. We need to protect our internet connection because we spend our time when we travel connecting to public Wi-Fi, hotels, restaurants, cafe, random public sites, and exposing ourselves to bad people who might be manipulating those public networks in order to steal our data, credit card credentials, passwords, private information. In the traveling community, it's very common. Just like you wash your hands before eating, you connect to a VPN before connecting to a public Wi-Fi. We've been using NordVPN since the beginning of our journey. If you're interested too, you can use the code NMEXP with the link in description and have access to four months extra on a two years plan. It's 30 days money back guaranteed, so you can try it and see if it fits you. That was one extra security tip to travel safely. So the next country is Nicaragua. Uh, Nicaragua, we heard one thing that we had to organize before getting there was to ship the drone uh, from Honduras to Costa Rica. And that way we would have no problems at the border because apparently they scan your car. So anyway, we had no drone for uh, Nicaragua. We went to the border. We went through, it actually was a border that took a lot of processing. It was probably almost like four hours, which is a lot longer than the other borders. And once we got in, honestly, the people drive really well. It was actually quite incredible how it felt like being in Europe in terms of the driving. The road qualities were great. And that's because the police there is very strict and ready to give penalties to anyone who doesn't really follow the rules. Nicaragua is really beautiful. Also, volcano land. The first one was a completely black uh, volcano. Cerro Negro, no? Yeah. 
and we went to the top and at the top crazy view with like a huge contrast of the black sand from the volcano crazy green uh, small trees and whatnot so that was really cool then the second volcano was actually a volcano where you just look straight down you could see the lava kind of bubbling and the later in the night you waited the more colorful and bright it would go. Nicaragua was less populated too so it felt a bit like a contrast with some of the previous countries we had visited in the region. It was much easier to find wild camp spots. We saw much more wildlife already. A lot of very beautiful birds and it was just fun to swim in this beautiful canyon. The towns were really oh, yeah. beautiful and you remember they call it the land of volcanoes and lakes and we actually celebrated our one year on the road cutting each other's hair alongside the lake. Yep. It was nice. Yeah, going from uh, long hair, man bun, to almost no hair and getting crazy sunburns. And for our one year on the road, we had a fondue, which was oh, yeah. interesting. It was really good to have it, but we were dying of heat, but it was so good. It was maybe not the best like Option. decision. <laughs> no, but we love fondue, so we had to have one. See you in Costa Rica! <laughs> I mean, everyone knows about Costa Rica and it's not overrated. No, it is heaven. I mean, no trash at all, nowhere. So clean. The beaches are perfect. The water is extremely clear, perfect temperature. And then first night, I don't know, an hour drive from the border, we arrive on this beach. No one, beautiful trees, just to bring you enough shade. There was a little bay and there was just us. We eventually stayed two nights and we thought, okay, if all of Costa Rica is like this, we're going to stay forever. Yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. And the wildlife. At the border of Costa Rica, there was a howling monkey just like over there. You know, like yeah. we could hear him shout through the forest. With that national park in the Caribbean. Oh. And you hear those noise? It's the howling monkey. We spend a lot of time on the west side, on the Pacific coast, because there's two beautiful peninsulas where we could camp at the beach every night. And then we did one little expedition on the Caribbean side, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's as exceptional. Looking for love so true. When I was down and down, along came you. Though you might be alive. 
of the really nice roads that we took was on Osa Peninsula, which is at the southwest of Costa Rica. And we took this little barge, put albatross on there and did a loop. Now, when you're doing this loop, it's full of animals. It's also extremely dense jungle with just one muddy track in the middle. And we were just following that uh, all the way till the end when we arrived to the last beach, Drake Bay. And, uh, and then from there, we would drive all the way back to the other side. There would be tons of river crossings, uh, surf beaches. And honestly, this is where we saw our nicest monkeys, our nicest parrots, our nicest... Uh, toucan, you saw toucan, a toucan eating. Yep, a toucan eating, and here it was incredible. Yeah, Costa Rica is really lush nature. And after that, it was time to go to Panama. And that's when some of the rainy season started. The off-road tracks we were taking were starting to get very muddy. And when we crossed to Panama, it was raining. And the soldier at the border said, hey, where are you guys coming from? We said, France. He was like, I hope you enjoy. And he was a military soldier. He ripped off his Panama flag from his vest and said, here, a memory of Panama, gave it to us. And we put it on one of our Velcros in the car. So again, to show people are extremely nice everywhere. And off we went, Panama started. And to be completely honest, when we arrived in Panama, we were a bit cooked by Central America. It was 30 to 40 degrees Celsius during the day, but we were boiling. Humidity. Sweat. Hot Humidity. and humid. Yeah. So in Panama, we really stayed in the mountains. Here in uh, Anton Valley, we did a oh, few yeah. hikes around uh, the crater, which, and that was fun. And then, of course, the Panama Canal. We rejoined some friends we had met in Canada. And after the Panama Canal, it was time to prepare our uh, albatross for shipment to Colombia because between Panama and Colombia, there's a, about a hundred kilometer of stretch of forest, which has no roads. You have to ship it in a container. And in the meantime, we were going to sales from Panama to Colombia. Dump in the water. Morning shower. Go for it. It actually gets really warm. It is now 8.15 and it's already very warm, very sunny. The water is clear and blue. The island over there is bushy, waiting for us to get there. And Mathilde is next. Go for it. Okay. Woo! We spent the first three days in the San Blas Islands. Uh, I mean, when you look at them from above, we were able to pull out the drone once. And we were right in the middle of these islands. The water was extremely clear. The sand was extremely white. The coconut trees were perfect. They had full of coconuts. We went and swam with the sharks, with the manta rays. We found crabs. We found all types of fish. Give me something, something good. many things in Panama, but uh, we did spend quite a bit of time in San Blas with that sailing trip, and it's exceptional. The San Blas people, they literally live on those tiny islands. So you have the island with the village, you have the island with the coconut tree fields, you have the island where the fishermen lives, and they really commute between those islands all the time. Uh, some people go in like islands a bit further to take care of a bunch of fields of coconut trees for like a month at the time and then there's a rotation and other people come to take care of the coconut trees. So it feels extremely remote and sailing through those islands made the whole experience even more special. Yeah. We were hoping to have kind of real sailing experience where we could do everything on the boat. It was not quite it. 
But if there's any sailors watching our videos, like don't hesitate to invite us in <laughs> comments because we would love to have a proper like sailing experience. We took on the big crossing through the Caribbean, all straight line till Cartagena in Colombia. It was about two days straight, mm -hmm. something like this. And one morning, 5 a.m., yeah. we picked out the head through the outside of the boat. And we could see the towers, the buildings of Cartagena all around us. We were entering the port with the red light of the, of the boat around us. And we were in South America. Yeah, South America starts. At this point, we are one year and three months into our trip. And I think without hesitation, South America was... The, the, I mean, honestly, we loved it. It was crazy. It was and, crazy. And it's coming in part three of this series. Stay tuned because it's coming and it's awesome. Our four feet now on the South American continent, we are filled with excitement. We know what is expecting us here is unlike anything we have seen before. And there and then, nothing else was standing in our way. Next, on our series Two Years on the Road, we will go to South America, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile and Argentina some of the most fascinating regions of our planet. That is coming up next week in part three.